I'm a bacteriologist. I love bacteria. <laughs> they can grow on a petri dish. And the beauty is, if you do an experiment, the petri dish does the talking. Okay. And here I am giving a talk about bacteria. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Bioprecipitation, that was a hypothesis. You know, occasionally we get these hunches or hypotheses. Scientists call them hunches, I think. And what they are is some idea that we don't have enough data for. Okay? So, here I am standing in a field about 1977, and I've been well trained in bacteriology. And there's this little problem called bacterial leaf blight. And I'm here to solve it. So, I thought I could. So, this is a poster child for the bacterium. It causes bacterial blight. These bacteria live on a leaf. And these bacteria are affectionately known as SU, short for Pseudomonas. Okay? Now, Pseudomonas is a group of bacteria, and Su is one of the friendly ones. It lives on a leaf, it doesn't cause disease, and we think we can make real use of it. Now, here it is on the seed. So this bacterium can live on a leaf. Some of them don't even cause disease. And they can be found on the seed, so if you plant the seed, they're on the plant for the next generation. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. <laughs> There's your Petri dish. Your Petri dish is that yellow bacterium. And we decided that we would get rid of this bacterium, Sue, by treating the seed with something. So we found a good treatment. You can see it there at the bottom of the dish. And we treated 20 tons of seed. And we checked the soil. There were no bacteria of this kind in the soil and we planted them, knowing that we would get rid of the disease. Voila. Three weeks later, the farmer calls up and said, the bacterium is here, confluent throughout the field. How did it get here? And we didn't know either. So we go up there, we look at the field, our petri dishes are ready, the bacterium is there. How did it get there? So we look up in the cloud. Say, Let's fly up there. So we flew up there holding the Petri dish out the window. <laughs> Let me tell you, in a Cessna 180, holding the Petri dish out the window and changing it every 500 feet and circling over the field and trying to avoid the vomit bag, it's all very cool. <laughs> and so we did this. And we found the bacteria not in the air, but in the clouds. And not just in the clouds, but in ice crystals. And there it was. And so we developed this idea that the bacteria live on plants, and they got to get off those plants and go somewhere else, like tourists, okay? <laughs> Especially in the middle of Montana. You want to leave sometimes, okay? So there they are. We call them uh, dandruff. They live on the plant. They make a million bacteria overnight, okay? And then they decide to leave and fly up into the air, just like balloons. They're very, very light, and they go wherever the wind takes them. Aha! So now we have a hunch, which I'll call a hypothesis. We got our data together, we published it, we presented at an international meeting, and hmm, it's the bioprecipitation cycle. Bacteria live on plants. Often, they don't hurt the plants. They're swept into the air. They cause ice crystals in the clouds. The ice bounces around, and down it comes as rain or snow. And that's pretty cool. We like that. Nobody else did. Okay. We didn't, our hypothesis did not have legs. Okay? No pun intended. Okay? So what did we do? It needed traction. It took 30 years to get the traction. We're now getting it. Basically, we have this very intriguing idea that bacteria can cause rain, and it can go up and then come down. And the more times it does across a continent, the better you are. Okay? At least that's what we think, 
and tell the people worry about floods, okay? But this is a global bacterium. We found it on five continents. We find it on plants, and now we know a lot about its DNA and a lot about how it moves around and how safe it is. Okay, so there you are moving across the continent. The bacterium, and some very clever scientists found this out, have a little spring that looks like a car spring, okay? And it lines up perfectly with water. And they only make it in the cold. And so that seems to be what they're doing up in the, up in the atmosphere, okay? So there's ice. The ice seems to glump right onto that spring. I think I have a better picture of that, more familiar to you. It would be an egg carton. And the bacterium makes that pink protein underneath, and then water lines up perfectly with it. Okay, and that's cool. That's called ice nucleation. Okay? And then we have this large molecule here called a snowflake. And the bacteria seem to cause those and make those things. And once they make them, they bounce up and down. And for every bacterial ice nucleation event, you get a, maybe a thousand snowflakes. And we have found that they come down in our mountains, and they're a major aspect of why we get precipitation in Montana. Now, a darker substance, subject. We have drought. Now, drought is a big problem. It seems to be getting bigger. In Texas, it's a huge problem. Uh, animals graze off the grass. What? They graze off the grass, and then... And maybe insects graze off the grass, too, but... Oh my gosh, no grass, no bacteria. What is our Sioux going to do? Okay? So, we also see it in Australia. We also see it in Africa. That's drought for you, okay? Can we do anything about it? Of course not. Except, we can plant some seeds. And we can choose the seeds carefully so that they like the bacteria and they get along with the bacteria and the bacteria grow up on the leaves, and maybe even trees that do this. And then we have a nice nucleation source. Instead of seeing clouds pass over for 30 days like I did in Tunisia, we can get rain. And that's our objective, is to understand how nature really was doing this all along. And we're really newcomers to this story. And the bacterium is not a newcomer probably been around here for 40 million years, maybe 400 million years. We're trying to figure that out. So we have a bacterium. We can put it on seed, and we can let it do its thing. And we can plant this idea in many parts of the world where they worry about rain and drought. And that's the idea. You get a hunch, and that's what science does. It starts with a hunch and you train yourself as well as you can. And after 30 years now, we can backtrack storms. We couldn't do it then. We know the DNA of the bacterium. We know which are the good guys and which are Sue's ugly sisters, and we know how to keep them away. Okay? We can do this stuff, and we can put it on the right plants, and we're doing experiments in many parts of the world, choosing the right wheat, the right barley, the right soybeans, and so on. And I think we have a plan. I think that when a farmer grows a crop of food, unbeknownst to him, maybe, he's also growing a crop of bacteria that will pay it forward downwind for the next guy to grow his crop. So that's our idea. And now, I think I have a little poem that I just wrote this morning at my daughter's request. I have a poem to tell of Charles and Louis. And, okay, Jonas as well. They knew their risks. They knew them well. And, by gosh, they played their vision cards. Though we have shuffled the deck a few times since, the rules of the game remain the same. It's my turn to take a risk. Okay? and bioprecipitation is its name. I see a veteran player across the table. 
She was conceived in green fields. Oh, well, how do you do? It's our friend Sue. <laughs> 